Hi, so in this video I shall be discussing bladder dysfunction and its various types. This is very confusing and an important topic right from the MBBS to the post graduation days and hence it is very important to know this. So we must be clear about the basic neurological anatomy of the bladder. This is the bladder body which is formed by the detrusor muscle and then there is the external urethral sphincter. The spinal cord segments T12 to L2 and S2 to S4 mainly supply the bladder. We know that sympathetic is the thoracolumbar outflow. So the sympathetic supply to the bladder is from T12 to L2 via the hypogastric plexus. And the parasympathetic supply is uh, via the craniosacral root. In case of bladder, it is by the sacral nerves and it is via the vesicular plexus located close to the bladder. Also, the somatic nerve which will supply a part of the urinary bladder is the pudendal nerve and it supplies only the external urethral sphincter. I guess we are clear on this. So, let us see what these nerves do. The pudendal nerve innervates the external urethral sphincter and provides a voluntary control over micturition. Somatic means voluntary and autonomic means involuntary. So autonomic is sympathetic, the hypogastric nerve T12 to L2 which causes relaxation of the detrusor muscle promoting urinary retention. Even though it excites the bladder base and external urethral sphincter, but what you must remember is that it causes basically the relaxation of the detrusor muscle and parasympathetic nerve, the pelvic nerve, nerves of the root value S2 to S4 causes contraction of the detrusor muscle and in turn it causes relaxation of the sphincter stimulating micturition. So micturition is basically the activity of the parasympathetic system. Also these nerves carry both afferent and efferent exons uh, fibers and sensory receptors in the bladder wall signal the need to urinate when the bladder becomes full. Now bladder stretch reflex we must know. It is a kind of a primitive spinal reflex. Primitive means it is present since the intrauterine life. And in this the micturition is stimulated in response to the stretch of the bladder. So the spinal reflex arc is as follows. The stretch receptors in the bladder wall respond to the bladder getting full and transmit signals to the spinal cord. The interneurons within the spinal cord relay the signal to the parasympathetic nerve causing bladder contraction and sphincter relaxation. And finally the contraction of the detrusor muscle stimulates micturition. So with toilet training especially beyond childhood this cortical inhibitory control is established and when the CNS maturity is achieved, this reflex, this primitive bladder stretch reflex disappears. So even though this reflex is kept inhibited by cortex normally as the child grows and the CNS matures, but it does need to be considered in certain conditions like neurodegenerative diseases where the brain is unable to generate cortical inhibition and in cases with spinal injuries where the descending inhibition from the cortex cannot reach the bladder because the pathway is disturbed. Now, neurogenic bladder is basically dysfunctioning of bladder in any kind of CNS lesion. It can be a cortical bladder which is also referred to as an upper motor neuron type or uninhibited bladder as we have seen cortex exercises an inhibitory control over the bladder. The spinal bladder can either be UMN or LMN depending on the site of lesion in the spinal cord. If the lesion is above T12, it will act as a UMN bladder or a cortical bladder and if the lesion is below T12, it will act as an LMN bladder. So cord transaction leads to automatic bladder when it, the lesion is above T12 and the lesion in reflex arc or cord transaction below T12 will lead to autonomous bladder. We will see in detail further. So cortical bladder is also called as uninhibited bladder. It is manifested as urgency even at low bladder volumes followed by a sudden uncontrolled urinary evacuation. This is seen in conditions like frontal lobe tumors, parasitical meningiomas and hence it is not usually seen in children. Now spinal bladder, it can either be a hyperreflexic bladder or what I was talking earlier an automatic bladder. When the 
level of lesion in the spinal cord is above T12, including the lesions in the cortical. And the lesion is above T12. Basically, in this, there is no awareness of bladder filling since the afferent signals from the bladder don't reach the brain. There is no descending control over the external urethral sphincter and it is constantly reflex, re, relaxed, but the spinal reflex is intact. So, the re, parasympathetic system initiates the detrusor contraction in response to the stretch receptors located in the bladder wall of the detrusor muscle and there is automatic emptying as soon as the bladder fills. This is referred to as reflex bladder. When the lesion is below T12, then it is known as areflexic or flaccid bladder also referred to as autonomous bladder. There is spinal reflex is lost and there is damaged parasympathetic outflow and hence the detrusor cannot contract. So there is uncontrollable bladder filling and there is overflow incontinence. But we must remember that the assessment of bladder function should be done only after the stage of spinal shock has passed off and this is approximately 3 months after spinal cord injury and during which there is overflow incontinence as it behaves as a flaccid bladder or an element lesion. Also, autonomous bladder is also seen in lesions of the local spinal reflex arc. There is no sensation of bladder fullness and there is continuous dribbling of urine. So it is kind of a basically element kind of bladder. There are two other terms which are used in medical field. These are overactive and underactive bladder. Overactive bladder is a retention dysfunction in which the bladder cannot retain and passes frequently or what we refer to as an urge incontinence and underactive bladder is a voiding dysfunction. It manifests as overflow incontinence. So what is incontinence? Incontinence is basically the inability to control urinary evacuation. Stress incontinence means the urine leaks on stress, for example, coughing, sneezing, increased intra-abdominal pressure and it is seen in conditions like sphincter dysfunction, external urethral sphincter dysfunction and weakness of the pelvic floor muscles. Urge incontinence, in this the patient experiences an urge to micturate and it is seen in overactive kind of neurogenic bladder. Overflow incontinence is when the bladder evacuates fully when full, without the patient having any sense or urge of micturating. So, as we had discussed earlier, so basically this is seen in conditions of chronic urinary retention or element kind of urinary bladder. And then there is a term known as functional incontinence. In this, the bladder function is normal, but the person is unable to make to the toilet in time and before that he passes urine. This might be because of any physical or mental impairment, for example, he might be having some fracture or dementia or something of the type. So, functional incontinence is basically normal bladder function but inability to micturate in time in the toilet due to some other reason. So, we see that basically it is the urge and the overflow incontinence which are types of neurogenic bladder, which are seen in neurogenic bladder or because of bladder dysfunction. Then there is mixed incontinence which is a combination of stress incontinence and urge incontinence. There are two more terms which you must know. Nocturia is passage of urine more than one time in the night and getting disturbed by the same. And nocturnal enuresis is a symptom of overactive bladder. So the diagnosis of any neurogenic bladder requires a battery of tests, the most important of which is urodynamic studies. Urodynamic studies are basically a kind of bladder function tests. They measure how much urine the bladder can hold, the pressure within the bladder, that is the intravesical pressure, how well the urine flows and how well the bladder empties when it is full. Then you can also be required to do cystoscopy, x-rays, CT scan and MRI. And the treatment of neurogenic bladder comprises of clean intermittent catheterization, the use of drugs including injections of botulinum toxin at times depending on the type of bladder dysfunction you are dealing with. Surgery for example augmentation cystoplasty to reduce the intravesical pressure and increase its holding capacity and formation of an ideal conduit and promoting lifestyle changes like avoiding caffeine, carbonated beverages and spicy fruits which are diuretics. Basically caffeine is a diuretic. Then weight loss to 
prevent stress incontinence, behavioral therapy, and the use of absorbent and dagamond, especially in incontinent adults. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I have been able to simplify this topic. Thanks a lot and please do share the knowledge.